everyone is familiar with the idea that substances are either solid, liquid, or gas. In the real world, things are not always this simple. Look at this smoke. It is behaving like a gas. But if you look closely, you can clearly see it is made up of solid particles suspended in a gas, which in this case is air. So is it a solid or a gas? We call this sort of two-phase system a colloid, and they come in all sorts. In this case, smoke is a gas solid colloid. Here are some other examples. You can have liquid gas colloid, or a solid gas colloid, or a solid liquid colloid, or even solid solid colloid. Today, we are going to look at liquid liquid colloids, specifically colloids made from two liquids that don't mix. This sort of colloid is called an emulsion, and these are very important in the food industry. The problem is that oil and water don't mix. This can be a problem if you want to make an emulsion that is going to last for more than a few seconds. In the food industry, we get around this by adding substances called emulsifiers. Here is a mixture of oil and vinegar. Vinegar is mainly water and behaves in the same way. To investigate emulsions, we're using mixtures of oil and water. To make it easier to see, we have dyed the oil component using a fat-soluble dye, Sudan Red. This dissolves in the oil, giving it a red colour, which doesn't spread into the water layer. Now we're going to try to use a few emulsifying agents. To make it a fair test, we're going to use the same amount of each. The ones we're going to use are egg yolk, as used in many sauces, detergent, in this case washing up liquid, mustard, as used in salad dressings, and a commercial emulsifier. Now we put a different emulsifying agent into each sample. Now we need to mix the layers to create our emulsions. When this is done commercially, a blender is used, but in the classroom it is possible to use smaller quantities and simply shake the mixtures vigorously for one minute. Leave the samples for a few minutes and wait and see what happens. You can see that all of the emulsifiers have slowed the separation of the two layers. Looking at the samples, it seems that egg yolk is the most effective at this. It's perhaps surprising that it is more effective than the commercial emulsifier. But there are many other factors to be considered when preparing food products than simply the stability of the emulsion. Taste, texture, cost and many others. My name is Paul McKnight and I'm a Senior Research and Development Manager at McPhee of Glenbergen. McPhee is a leading food ingredients manufacturer who develop and manufacture products for the food industry. Emulsions are essential to our products because a number of different properties are required across the shelf life. When you think of emulsions, you think of oil and water or water and oil. But when you reflect on everyday products such as muffins, you have to create a stable batter in order to have the same finished product consistency. Our products contain emulsifiers, they contain starches, gums, gels, to ensure that the product stays in solution. Uh, one example would be the dairy cream alternatives that we manufacture, and it's essential that they remain in solution over the shelf life, and that the product remains stable but not too stable that it takes too long to, to whip. I always had an interest in science and food, and I worked in kitchens whenever I was younger, and later as a chef to pay my way through university. Future problems that I see the industry facing are ones that you read about in the everyday press at the moment. So there's fat, sugar is a, a huge one at the moment. And knowing that we've already experienced a salt reduction over the last decade, and the impacts that that's had on the food industry, the likely requirement for reduction in calorific delivery is probably going to be one of the biggest ones. The best part about my job is seeing our finished products up on shelf, whether that's me that's developed them personally or the team. For anyone that was interested in getting a job in the food industry, I would encourage them to develop their analytical skills and also their approach in science, specifically with their chemistry.